Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are here for the June 2018 World Docs Virtual User Group Meeting from Attorney Computer Systems. We should have like a little, a little tone that comes on, like do do, dun dun dun. dun, dun, dun. There we go. <laughs> We're today we are talking about uh, deleting and sometimes maybe recovering. Mary Jo is going to take that topic. And I'm going to talk about quick profiles and uh, especially about how they differ from favorite matters because there's, there's been confusion about that and we just want to make sure that everybody has that straight. Without further ado, I am going to press all the magic buttons that will get me to a point where I can open up World Docs and Mary Jo can talk about deleting files. Yes, a fun, fun part. <laughs> so most everyone, I'm going to just take this document here and um, hit delete, but most everyone at the firm is probably not going to see all these options I'm going to talk about. Um, usually when we have delete, we have it locked down um, as just a basic best practice to send to the salvage bin, which means that it can be recovered most likely by a manager who has rights to get into the salvage bin and restore that document. The other two options that I'm going to talk about are delete and shred. And again, managers are usually the only ones that would even have that right. And I'm even going to talk to you a little bit about the fact that even they don't really need those rights. And I'll, yeah, I'll explain that in a minute. So I'm going to take this document and we're going to use the delete key up here at the top little icon, or you can right click and hit delete, does the same thing. And when we get to here, this is the three options that I'm talking about. And I am a manager, so I am seeing all three. Most users, like I said, will only see this move to salvage bin. That's all we really want them to see. The delete option is going to delete the document, but it may be recoverable later using some other software or an IT person can help you do that. It's not maybe completely gone. It may still be recoverable, but not easily, okay? The shred option is it's permanently gone. If you hit shred, this document is, is, is not coming back. You're not gonna get it back. It, it's deleted off of everything. So these two, you can see, we want to be very careful with those. We don't want just anybody to be able to come use these two options because, you know, in, in, in our experience, a user is going to accidentally delete a document and not mean it and need it back, and they're not going to be able to get it back. So the move to salvage bin is always the best option. So I'm going to move this one to, to the salvage bin. I'm in our Scooby-Doo matter, and I'm just going to leave that selected and say OK. And it's going to take that document out and move it to the salvage bin. Now, where is the salvage bin and how would I get a document back from there, right? So if we go out to our cabinets directory and I go to my client files, there is a extra line here for salvage. This is where the, those deleted items would go to the salvage area underneath the client files. And as soon as the first document for a matter is sent to the salvage bin, it creates that directory in the salvage bin to exactly mimic what the active directory um, client, uh, active clients has in it. So if I look at our salvage bin, I now should have a Scooby-Doo, which I think I may have already had, and there's my zero, zero matter for test client procedures. And if I open that, there's a bunch of documents, but there's my Myrtle Beach document that I just, that I just sent to the salvage bin. No, oh, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. How come you get to go to Myrtle Beach and I go to Indianapolis? Oh, it's just the way it works there. Okay, I just yeah. wanted to point yeah. that out. Well, probably the same reason that I go to Chicago in the middle of winter and you go to New Orleans or somewhere. Yeah, that okay. might be. Okay. I don't know. I get sent to Myrtle Beach in the middle of summer. <laughs> you get sent to, to Chicago in the middle of winter. Okay. So that document is then there. And if I am a manager, oops, I closed that up here. Let's go back in there. So if I am a manager and have rights, um, to restore that, um, at that point in time, uh, where am I? Cabinets, get back to cabinets, there we go. And go to my client files, go to my salvage bin, go back to Scooby-Doo, test procedures. All right, so here's my document that I want to restore. All I need to do is right click on that, and then I can undelete that right here. And when I undelete it, it goes ahead and puts it right back into the exact same active file that I had to begin with. It puts it, it restores it exactly back to where it was. So I'm going to go back out um, and get to, get out of this, and we're going to go back into Scooby, just so I can show you that that document will then be back. Scooby, matter zero, zero, 
say OK. And now I'm going to have that document back in here. I had two Myrtle Beaches, so now there's two Myrtle Beaches there again. So that's how I can get those documents to be deleted and not show up in my Active Directory anymore with this client. Um, they're now moved out to the salvage bin. I can restore them, or a manager can restore them anytime if I did need to get them back. And I haven't lost anything. Now, the other part of this that you can do is like, all right, so we've got these documents that have sat out in the salvage bin for six months. And if they've been in the salvage bin for six months, chances are we don't need to get them back. Um, and that's a firm decision as to how long you want to keep them out there. But there is a way to set the indexer on the schedule to go automatically delete documents that are in the salvage bin that are so many months old. You can say three months, six months, a year, whatever you want to set that at for a time frame. And it will automatically, when it updates the, the database on it, that sweep in that time frame, look to see if there are any documents that old in the salvage bin. And it will automatically delete them out of there for you. So that's why you may not even need the shred or the delete option. Uh, because if everything goes in the salvage bin and you have the schedule set to automatically delete after so much time, it will automatically purge those documents for you. So most firms, um, I think our best practice here is to just take off those other two options, leave the move to salvage bin for users, give someone, a manager or someone, the right to restore from that salvage bin, and then when somebody has accidentally deleted, they can go ahead and take care of it. And then we let the indexer do the rest. So when you do that, Mary Jo, you still see this box, but you just don't see these two options? That's correct. Okay, so you still mm -hmm. see all this, mm -hmm. you just only have that one option. Mm -hmm. The other two, it's like they don't even exist. Yep, so they don't even gone. know that they're there. Now, another thing I want to point out is that if you, if you do not have rights to restore from the salvage bin, you won't see it here. Mm -hmm. It, it just plain won't be there. So don't let that scare you. If you look and you say, oh, I deleted, I sent something to the salvage bin, but there's no salvage bin. Well, that's just because you're not a manager or you're not a user well, that's there's, been given there's that Well, there's one right. other reason, um, Paul, that you may not see that salvage bin, and this is also very important, is if you don't have the salvage turned on to begin with. So some firms have not set up their cabinets to check the box to enable mm. the salvage bin. Mm -hmm. And so that's very important in the cabinet setup in your WD admin um, section that when those are set up, that checkbox needs to be checked to right. enable the salvage bin. Then that becomes available so that then you can go ahead and move and, and restore from the salvage bin. Now we always do set that up, but we have a lot of clients that we didn't set up World Docs that's for. Right. So that's definitely something that if you're a manager or you're an administrator at a firm, you might want to go check and see if this is working by testing it end to end. Mm -hmm. and, and even though we have that on, um, I was going to say we may not have um, anything in salvage. So if, if you don't see this salvage bin here um, and you're a manager, then I would check the cabinet. So this is an HR cabinet. We do see the salvage bin. There's just no documents that have been sent to it. So there's no file tree here to show documents. Right. But if um, I didn't have this cabinet enabled for salvage, I wouldn't even see this as an option here at all. So that's how you can tell uh, if you've got a cabinet with no salvage bin and we've got it always enabled on everything. Um, but that's a, a sure sign you don't have it enabled. Gotcha. And Patty has picked this moment as the opportune time to interrupt <laughs> you, Mary Jo, because she has someone with a question. Um, Mary Jo, Marcus would like to know where the scheduling feature is. Okay, that is also in, um, it, it, that would be in your WD admin section. And that's where you would go ahead and you would, um, I'm sorry, that would be in your in indexer, indexer. Mm -hmm. on your indexer schedule. Um, so when you're looking, and I'm not logged into our indexer, but if you were on the indexer machine and you would look at the indexer panel, the control panel uh, on the indexer, there's a schedule in there. And that's where you can add that. It's just like when you do your scheduling for your updates of the text and database. There's just another routine that can be added to purge the sal salvage right. in there. So, so if you have it scheduled to update your profile database every night, you'll see an entry for, for that. Mm -hmm. And there would be another line item in there for running the salvage. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would be scheduled to run every, every month, every week, mm -hmm. whenever you schedule it. Um, that's so right. that's, that's where you look, on the indexer, in that scheduling part of the indexer. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, thank you, Mary Jo. And, and just on the, on the difference between delete and salvage, 
Think of delete as, as it being a document that goes into the wastebasket. It gets emptied that night. It's gone down to the, the depths of the, the building that you work in, probably in a locked room where they keep the garbage before the, the garbage comes. Or you know, you know. It's somewhere, and someone can get it back because it hasn't been shredded. But you can't. You can't go there, and it's unlikely that your administrator can go there or your IT person can go there. But there's probably somebody that can get that back. Whereas shred, it's like shredding a document. Yeah. Although we've all seen those Sherlock Jones episodes or or those mysteries, Sherlock Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm crossing Shirley Jones and Sherlock Holmes in my head. I, I was going to say Indiana horrible, Jones and give you a little more credit, but no. <laughs> Uh, we've seen those where people are stringing together the pieces of paper from the shredder, but you know that's that's kind of kind of unrealistic. So I'm going to show you um, how to create a quick profile uh, as a basis for explaining how that differs from favorite matters. So if if I go into World Docs and get over to you're all right, you're all right. And I get into the profile screen. Um, I see something here called quick profiles. Okay. Now I also see something called favorite matters, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So I can create a quick profile simply by coming in here and hitting add. It takes me to a blank profile for whatever cabinet I was in, and I can specify anything: um, test um, a certain client, like Scooby. Um, a certain matter, a certain doc type, like maybe email, particular author, particular typist. I can even add security. I can say this is this type of document is going to be read only. Okay, and I can save that profile and give it a name. I'm going to call and I'm going to save it only for me. If you were a manager, you could save it for everyone. And I'm going to call it uh, Scooby Test, just so we don't get confused and wonder if I really need this later. And I've created a quick profile called Scooby Test. And so anytime that I am profiling a document, and let's actually get all the way out of here, and let's say I go create a new document, or let's just go back into this profile. And uh, actually, I'm going to go. I'm going to go choose one from Purdue Law, just so you can see it changing the name. I got it. Okay, so here's. Purdue Law, and I want to I want to change this profile, or I want to save a brand new document. I'm I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm going to go out to Word, and I'm just going to demonstrate it that way because it makes more sense. When would I use this? Well, you'd use it when you're creating a new document, and you want to profile it a certain way. So if I type whatever I'm going to type, and then save to World Docs, I get a screen that has this Quick Profile tab that I can then pull out. Um, yeah. Where'd my quick profile go? So much for that. Did I not save it? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna take one of these other ones. Okay, that didn't really do me much good. Where'd it go, Mary Jo? Yeah, I do these I do these things and then I ask Mary Jo, what happened? I don't know. Let's find out. I might have saved it the wrong way, quick profiles. Oh, it's, it's it's under personal. I probably just didn't even see that one over there. So here's a document that's already profiled with this name and then this client and these authors and typists, and there's no security on it. If I choose Scooby Test, it will show me all the things that it could put in there. I hit paste. It warns me that the security has changed, and I have just reprofiled this document. Now, I could have done the same thing if I'd been paying attention. I think the personal was there. I just didn't see it. You have to sometimes look for the quick profile that you've created in the right folder that it got created in. The edit part instead of a new. Okay. And so bottom line, this allows you to quickly profile a document with a set um, client and matter. Now, so people say, well, how is that different than favorite matters? Because when I'm profiling a document, I can also pull up favorite matters and let's take Delaney and just double click here. And what this does is it changes the client and matter, but it doesn't have anything to do with doc type, author, typist, description, uh, putting in uh, security. None of that 
changes with favorite matters. Favorite matters is matters. The only fields that are going to change or populate automatically when you select a favorite matter is the client, and if you select it all the way down to a matter level, the matter. Whereas with a quick profile, you have the ability, as we saw, to define all of these things. And so that's very, very helpful uh, when you have a certain type of thing that you're profiling constantly. Uh, maybe it's for a certain client matter. Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with a client matter. Uh, maybe that's not one of the things that you put in the quick profile. So for instance, if I add a new one, I don't have to specify a client and matter. I can just say, you know, it's email from blank to whatever I want up there and say something like email and maybe the author and typist and maybe adding security, but I don't even have to specify client matter. So the quick profile gives me access to defaulting or specifying a, a, a profile that can be used very quickly, hence the name, uh, with all these fields filled in whereas simply using favorite matters is going to simply show you your, your, your most recently used clients and their matters and allow you to specify those fields. So that's the difference between the two. It's subtle, but once you understand what quick profiles can do more for you than, than just doing the client matters thing, is that uh, at that point then you can really, really beef up your use of quick profiles. I've seen people that literally have dozens of quick profiles to find, and they're able to switch through them very quickly and, and get right to what they want to do and save a lot of time when profiling documents. So that's that. Of course, I would be remiss if I did not take you to our website, which is attorneycomputersystems.com. Notice how I emphasize that last S in the word systems, because without it, you will not get to the right place. If you go to that website and hover over or click on the word videos, you will end up seeing a list of all of our video content, and there's a lot of it. We have six different titles that we update on a monthly basis. Four of them are live events. Two of them are pre-recorded. So let's start there. The eBytes video series is Mary Jo. She's got three of these that she tapes or films every month, one on Practice Master, one on Tabs, one on World Docs. They're very short. They're two or three, sometimes four minutes long. They're very concise. So we take really cool things that we think not everybody knows about that can be explained quickly and concisely, and we put them in an e-byte. Now, for those topics that are broader in nature and may take longer to describe or to get into the, a deep dive of what you're talking about, we have the Paul and Mary Jo Show. We record one of these each month, and either I or Mary Jo will take a, a more substantive topic and uh, really get down to the to brass tacks, as my mother used to say, spending 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes going into all the details about that particular topic. Of course, we have our virtual user group meetings. You are currently in the World Docs virtual user group meeting. We also have them for Practice Master and Tabs. They meet on the same day, just different times. And we, I have my Coffee Pot webinar series. I do one of these every month. And these are uh, where we will bring someone in from another company that has a product that adds value to tabs or Practice Master or World Docs. And that person will explain what their product does, show a demonstration, sometimes talk about pricing if it's appropriate. And it just gives you a good way to expand your horizons on, on what you can do uh, beyond the scope of the program itself. Uh, if you'll click on one of these live events on the More Info button, you will find a description of the actual event. Uh, here's a description of our World Docs virtual user group meetings. Information on the next upcoming live event, along with two links to register. They're both going to take you to the same place. They, you know, they just show you more information about you know, where you're going, a description of what the topics are, and then as we scroll down, you'll find recorded versions of every one of these that we did before. So this is the one that you're currently listening to or that you're currently attending live, and so it's not out on the site yet, at least according to this representation of the site. Uh, but as we scroll down, we have, uh, you can browse through these and literally look at every World Docs virtual user group meeting that we ever recorded. Or if you're more uh, looking for something specific, uh, like deleting emails or deleting files within World Docs, you can simply type a word and hit enter or select from the list that pops up. Come on, take my enter and take me somewhere. 
of course, the website always decides to take 10 seconds to take me to a list when I'm doing this instead of two seconds. Um, well, maybe I have an internet connectivity issue. Anyways, you get to a list of documents that have that word in the description or a list of videos that have that word in the description. And it's a nice way to zero in on something as opposed to browsing around. Um, so everybody have a good rest of the day, good rest of the month, and we will see you again in July. Thanks much, everybody. Bye-bye.